Welcome to Thursday, the 10th day of February, 2022. Your podcast brought to you today by Chugwater Chili, the gourmet spice of Western life. Don't forget to use checkout code ChugwaterDon to get 20% off. Get 20% off a Chugwater Chili green seasoning. It's an easy way to put together a pot of green chili with a big cane coming up this weekend. Here's a good idea to satisfy all your friends and family coming over to watch. Go to ChugwaterChili.com. The next clipper system comes in tonight and Friday, and it's going to be a little more potent. Some of you did experience a few snow showers and flurries yesterday afternoon and evening and last night. This next clipper system is going to cause the winds to pick up, but there'll be downsloping winds from a westerly direction, so that means a Chinook. So that's going to make temperatures along and east of the divide pretty mild today. And nothing going on west of the divide either. Do be ready for some windy areas, especially along I-80 and I-25. Now, snow showers will develop north to south tonight and Friday, starting up in Montana, then south into northern Wyoming by morning, then into northern Colorado by late morning or early afternoon tomorrow. The system is going to bring a pretty good shot of snow to the, the northern Black Hills of Wyoming and South Dakota, the northern end of the Bighorns. This type of system will put a nice little shot of snow into those areas. Watch out for I-90 and I-25 to get slick late tonight and tomorrow. I think this system is going to probably produce a bit more weather than some forecasts indicate. But it's back to fair weather Saturday through Monday. Not much going on during that stretch. We have a storm system brewing for next week, mainly late Tuesday through Thursday. We'll, we'll show you that in more detail. Patterns are changing for the rest of February into early March. So we are going to basically see with this system by the middle of next week, sort of a change up from where we've been for the last five weeks, which has been a pretty stagnant pattern across many areas of the Western United States. Things though will get more busy starting with this weather pattern change around the middle of next week. Today's weather shows the 500 millibar chart at 18,000 feet, the jet stream swinging through the region like this with that almost permanent area of high pressure that's been there staying there. And then notice the closeness of the lines together. So basically this means a big difference in temperature and pressure right here. So some pretty strong jet stream winds associated with this system. And they're coming in at an oblique angle to the Continental Divide. So what that'll do is that'll make it windy. Embedded right here is a little kink that will carve out a little bit of a deeper trough as it comes in tonight and tomorrow. And there it is. You see that little kink? It really doesn't look like much, does it? But that is going to cause a little area of low pressure to form, drag in some colder air, and those strong jet stream winds aloft will cause a lifting motion, which will be producing along and near the Continental Divide some snowfall. Now, this is from late tonight through Saturday morning. This looks very familiar, where we have the axis of heavier precipitation right along and near the Continental Divide. You can see the northern Black Hills here. You can see the Bighorns here and up into the Beartooth as well. Notice the Laramie Range Casper Mountain area as well. Then the Central Mountains of Colorado. So as this system comes in from the northwest, it's a good direction for the mountains to pick up some good lift and get some snow showers. And then you can see the gray out on the plains. You further away you get from the mountains, there is going to be some snow showers, enough to make roads and highways slick. The Pine Ridge area here could also get a few snow showers. Notice the Pine Ridge has some snow showers. The Black Hills pretty good. Then we have a little bit of a snow hole here between the Pine Ridge and the Black Hills due to down sloping winds. You'll see that frequently. So this little clipper system is going to produce some weather on Friday. So tomorrow, if you've got to travel, you need to prepare for winter weather. It's not a big storm, but it's one of these nuisance situations that can make roads and highways really icy really quickly and as well as the mountain passes. As we get further on, we're going to see high pressure build in over the weekend, and we see very little weather going on for Saturday, for Sunday, and Monday. Now, by Tuesday afternoon, we have, it looks like a bowling ball, an upper level low moving into Southern California. Basically, the system is going to go from here and go down the coast just like that. Now, as we showed you yesterday, the trend for the last five or six weeks has been for systems to go like this or go like this and basically just not come through the West, just glancing the West. That's why West of the Divide, if you live in Western Colorado, Western Wyoming, Idaho, Utah, uh, the Eastern side of Washington and Oregon, 
back into California. There just hasn't been much weather. It's just because this jet stream has persistently been up here. But with this pattern change, with this low digging down along the Southern California coast, we sort of changed the ball game. As we showed you yesterday, high pressure will build in the Southeast and the high pressure ridge starts to migrate finally a little bit more to the West. Now, the big question mark and the real trick and the hard part of the weather forecast is whether or not this system is gonna mount to much in terms of becoming an organized storm in this area right here. Could it end up being a, a major winter weather event or is it gonna be a minor one? And right now I can't tell you which way it's gonna go. I'm gonna do what I did yesterday and I'm gonna show you the differing solutions from the different models. And when you're this far out, you just really don't know which model is gonna be right yet or if any of them are gonna be right. But I just wanna show you sort of what we're looking at. So as we form the forecast and get into more detail, Tomorrow, and especially by Monday, you'll kind of understand where we are with this pattern. So as the storm comes down the West Coast, it's a, an impressive closed low. As we go forward, this is what it looks like, according to the European model, a low over southeastern New Mexico by Thursday morning. See this closed line right here? This means that the winds around the low, all the way up to 18,000 feet, are upslope. Counterclockwise spin around the low here. There's also, this right here is a cold surge that'll come into Montana and Wyoming and Northern Colorado, bringing upslope from the Northeast while you get a Southeast upslope wind from the low here. So what could end up happening is you're gonna have some winter weather in this area right here by Wednesday into Thursday. The devil will be in the details on the placement of this low and where the best upslope will be. So this is the European model for Thursday morning. This is the Canadian model for Thursday morning. Quite a big difference, either in New Mexico or South Central Kansas. The US model is over the Texas Panhandle and a little bit more like the European model. If you look at the European model, the Canadian model, it's like they got married and had the American model, kind of a hybrid of those two coming together. This would be an impressive storm system, although not terribly organized. The Japanese model, completely different. It's got a low up over northern Arizona, more elongated, then it's got another little kicker system coming in that may kick out this low like this by Thursday night or Friday. So basically, this is what we know. We've got a weather pattern change Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Wednesday and Thursday, the western high plains and Rockies have a chance for snow and a change back to colder, unsettled weather. But the details are very far from being sorted out. If you look at the European model solution, it's showing a real significant swath of winter weather right here, moderate amounts of precipitation up here, and you can see the Pacific Northwest, California into the Great Basin, not getting a lot, but getting some weather out of the system. And this is what it looks like snowfall wise. Don't fall in love with either of these models I just showed you in terms of the snow and the precipitation because this will change. But the overall writing message, this is the more blue and purple we've seen in this area here than we've seen for several weeks. So things are changing. And if we go out further, this is by Saturday night of next weekend. It shows a storm gone by then, but another wave coming in behind it, probably by next Sunday and Monday. And then if we go further out to the 18th, or rather the 23rd of February, you see another strong wave coming on in and notice where the high is, it's back here. So what'll happen is the pattern is changing to where the Pacific now, the door to the Pacific has been closed for the most part, at least for the Western side of the United States. It's been more open up here and into those areas. But by next week and through the rest of February into early March, a more Pacific influence for the West. This is two good pieces of news. Number one good piece of news is this is gonna bring back precipitation into the Western United States again. So I know the snowpack has been shrinking, basically shrinking based on averages, not that it's melting out, but shrinking. But this is gonna get the snowpack going again. That's the good news. The second piece of good news is if we have a more dominant Pacific flow of air into the United States, that starts to mitigate the Arctic intrusions Earlier this week, we showed you the potential for Arctic intrusions could come back, and they still could. But the recent trend now is more of a Pacific flow. 
which would basically help negate a big plunge of Arctic air into the U.S. again. So we'll see what happens. It bears watching. So there's some stuff to talk about, some stuff to things to figure out. Stay tuned. We'll have an update for you tomorrow. As we take a look at the tail end of the forecast out to the 25th of February, you can see getting more wet here in the far west, finally. Have yourself a good Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow.